So what's your entire take on this lump sum appraisal? Clients were not very well taken care of. Guide me through your conflict, I guess, with Steve Patrick. Don't start crossing the line and start talking about things you're not supposed to talk about. And the homeowner's pissed in this case? And it put me out of business. Is there a good insurance company? We got to remember that it's all about the client. All right, guys, I have a very special treat for you today. I know this episode will be spicy because the person who is with me is, he's been pretty spicy and pretty, uh, I don't even know the word, how to describe it. How would you describe your behavior today? Somebody, somebody asked if I woke <laughs> up on the sassy side of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> he's been sassy. I like that. <laughs> anyway, we're going to talk to Nick. He actually was mentioned on this channel a few times. Uh, first time, well, the b biggest mention was in Lindsay Douglas interview. He is the person who was nasty foreskin, she, co she called you. Uh, I want to uh, just quick feedback your side of the story, your answer, if you will, because it was very disrespectful. It was, you know, it, I, I don't know what's going on with her. You know, I, I, I don't know if there's un underlying issues. She kind of disappeared for a while and then popped up again. And she seems to be just coming after everybody, not just mm -hmm. me. Um, and, you know, we had some really bad dealings after Hurricane Harvey in 2017, 18. The clients were not very well taken care of. And, you know, without getting into too much detail, I lost the jobs because of it, because we had introduced her to the clients. So they never went anywhere. And it was millions, you know, it was game changing, life changing, company changing work for us that, wow. you know, we didn't have an opportunity at. And she was the main reason. She may not want to admit it, and she may say that she's got, you know, little old grandmas that have these stories to tell, but tell them, you know, I'll tell them and I'll respond, but I'm not going to offer up anything that I don't need to. I think, like I said, I told her one day, you know, you're doing a pretty good, a pretty good job yourself of digging a hole with a dull <laughs> shovel. So much drama. And that's what I hate when you so unreasonable, when you're bashing people unreasonably, you're burying yourself. And, and she's got me blocked, so I can't respond. Of course. You know, if, if you're not, she's scared of what I'll say, or she yeah. wouldn't have me blocked. And most people, and that, that's uh, my thing too. If people block another people, it means they're not ready for the conversation. That's what makes you actually hate her. Like if you, if you have a dispute with someone, go and deal with that person. Mm -hmm. But when you start blocking, that's where you cross the line. And that's where you see who is really who. You know, person who blocks other person in a healthy conflict. There is not healthy conflict, but there's yeah. healthy conflict. I mean, business disputes will be there, but this one is just, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm blocked too. So is we're, we're is. both, uh, <laughs> both on this side of the spectrum. Um, let's talk about public adjusters. Now what's <clears> happening <throat> in Texas today, public adjusters, appraisals, so many players, um, the, your review of Steve Patrick today. I think a lot of people are waking up to new reality when we have way too many players, way too many third parties, which many would argue we need it because we were outnumbered by insurance companies and their adjusters. And so we did need middle parties, but what middle parties are doing today, I would argue is no better what insurance companies are doing. And um, what you starting is, I think is beginning of something bigger. I think people are start starting reviewing the middle people. So, uh, and, you know, we all know how bad insurance companies are. Yeah. And giving feedback to insurance companies, State Farm, Allstate, is one thing. So people used to giving feedback to the contractor. People used to giving feedback to um, insurance company. They're not used to giving feedback to attorney who's trying to help right or to appraisal or public adjuster because we think that they're like savers like they're like police or doctor that they're here to help when nobody else can help well they're also not perfect so guide me through your conflict i guess with steve patrick at what went wrong because i know you had a really good relationship with him, and you speak highly of him uh but where's the dispute you know, you know, there's a there's a need for third parties, mm -hmm. you know, no matter how good you are. I, I feel like I'm pretty good. I do a lot of my own, all of my own commercial supplementing and I write a good scope, no fluff. You know, I've been a contractor for 
a long time, longer, much longer than I've been a roofer, you know, specifically. Um, and I write a good solid scope and I stand behind it and I, I get it to usually can get them to about 75 or 80% of the, where I need them to be. And then, you know, we get, we've got to send it off to appraisal, you know, sending something off to appraisal too soon is really volatile. You know, if you've got a, let's say a million dollar claim and they're only at two or 300,000, you, you can't go to appraisal because if you think it's a million and they appraise it, once they make that decision, it's done. So it's just too volatile. There's too much gap to close there. So that's when I would go to a PA. And I, and I don't use PAs a lot. I, I've only sent a few claims, um, more so recently than ever before because of, in Texas especially, last year, that big freeze we had in February, you know, they spent, I don't know, 20 billion or whatever the number is. Well, come hail season, you know, they're, they're locking it down. They're not wanting to pay for anything. So mm -hmm. that, in Texas, that created a bigger need for us to bring third parties in. You know, but we get them as far as we can and then pass them off. Like Steve Badger always says on stage, play nice. And when that's over, send it to appraisal. Don't get in a big fight. Don't start crossing the line and start talking about things you're not supposed to talk about, policy and all that. When they can't play nice anymore, let a third party take it over. So that's what we do. With Steve, and Steve is one of the most knowledgeable and experienced guys in our industry. I mean, he knows his stuff. He does. And I, it, I, I feel bad about what happened today, but I mean, I gave it every opportunity I could. I can show you all the messages, all the emails with this whole team trying to just make it right. And I just finally had enough. So how know? many claims you hired him to help you with? Four. Four. Three residential and a commercial. Okay. Uh, did all four went back bad or? The first one uh, was about a $26,000 increase. That's the one the client had to pay 6,000. Because remember the client pays. So I'm still doing $26,000 worth of work, you know, and the client's just coming more out of pocket on top of their deductible. And how much was the entire job? Uh, that one, you know, I don't remember on that one, 50, 50 to 60,000 total, I think. Okay, so insurance, who was insurance company? Liberty Mutual on that one, maybe. So Liberty Mutual denies your supplement. You bring not Steve, all of it. Yeah, you know some of it. Yeah. So Steve Patrick comes in and <clears throat> he charges on increase. How how was this structure? No, they can't. So they can't charge like a PA. They have to charge hourly. Okay. Mm. But other appraisers that I've used in the past will put a cap on it. You know, I've just signed a new one just today. He put a fifteen hundred dollar cap on it. That's okay. I can justify that. It's about twenty five to thirty thousand dollar increase potentially. So 1500 makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, a PA will charge 10% of the increase. Well, on 26,000, that's $2,600. I had to pay LP loss $6,000, or the client had to pay LP loss $6,000. So they signed a contract with? LP. Directly with the client, yeah. Okay. So you get more work, they get in the homeowner's pissed in this case? Very. Very? Uh, did they know that it's gonna cost 6,000? They had a contract. It says hourly. It's hard to estimate the hours you put into it. How much is it hourly? I just, I guess I, it's my fault. I'll, I'll own it. I'm the one that put them on the list for them to choose from. And I just assumed they would be a lot more fair because of my experience in the past. I've used three other appraisers and they all do it the same way. And then here comes LP with these crazy numbers. So $6,000, how many hours did they put in this claim? Like what? I guess they had 24 hours, 250 an hour, so 24 hours. So they charge like lawyers, similar. Pretty much. 250 for the 24 hours. So Steve does the work or someone else does the work? No, uh, there was another, another gentleman that works for him that was the actual appraiser. He doesn't actually do it anymore. I think that's part of the problem. So what went wrong? Like, um, <clears throat> is it just the billing, the cost of billing cost or something else? Is Mostly, um, on the other one in College Station, and you know, I didn't mention this in the video earlier today, um, they got, I think my scope was about 66,000, and they were only at 42 at the insurance company, and they got it all the way up to where it needed to be, and they did a great job at that. And then they tried to take credit for the extra six or 7,000 that came in and said, oh, well, we actually got more than what you were asking for. No, we got an HVAC quote to add to it for the condenser outside. 
that was the increase. It wasn't like you came up with something or found something I didn't already have on there. You know what I mean? So trying to take credit where it's not due. The big deal with that one was there's a, it's an older house built in the 60s, 70s, somewhere in there. And all the brick got damaged by hail. Clay brick had big chunks taken out of it. Hmm. Insurance company, they got them to go from 50 to 150 individual bricks. But you can't replace 50 year old brick, not individually, right? So we, we requested to have all the brick replaced on the whole house. And they bragged up and down about this umpire that they had a relationship with, that Steve Patrick trained her, and this is gonna go so good. You know, I mean, just hyped it up. And $4,000 for 150, 150 bricks. And, you know, they weren't happy. They kept trying to go back to their credit. They did, but the umpire signed the award. And after that's done, it's done. So now the client's stuck. He's got all this broken brick and there's no way to replace it for so that. So they are an umpire that Steve Patrick trained, got you $4,000 for 150 bricks. That's all. I said, well, at least go back and appraise the 150 brick, appraise the value of that better. That's a twelve dollars to $15,000 deal, not a $4,000 deal. To replace all the bricks, 40000 hmm. you know? But they didn't even get that scope of work that was approved appraised properly because appraisal is all about value take the scope put the proper value to it so what's your entire take on this lump sum this um appraisals like after you've dealt with it like so you have four claims with them you probably have done a few more like do we need appraisals like what's like what's the solution here is it, I mean, do we still blame insurance companies or do we just give up and do something else? What's the real solution? I, the lump sum thing, I, for me, it hasn't worked. And, and honestly, after this video, I've, I've gotten, I don't know, dozens of messages, comments on the post, and it doesn't work for anybody. No contractor has been able to get it done themselves. Not one, I, I still haven't seen one example of it getting done. Really? You know, there was a, there was a, a panel um, I think it was at Win the Storm where they talked about it, uh, Brad Gardner and Jack Hanks and I think it was Steve on there maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and from what, I, from what I understand about that, you know, I guess they're getting some done, but they're, what, what I found out is they're financing the job for the client and then having the client send in the scope and saying, well, cost incurred, pay me. So they're putting it all on the client. How fair is that? So that's, not, not a, that's not a good situation to put your client into. No, so they, okay, I see it. So not insurance company, but the client. Yeah, finance the job for the client. Contractor gets paid in full. So now it's cost incurred. So you should be able to get that money. But if the insurance disagrees with it, the only way to now get cost incurred reimbursed to the client is third party. So about, it, it, it's, it's pushing all these claims back to the third parties, which again, we need them sometimes. But this is this is just, in my it's opinion, just streamlines their revenue. Streamlines, every, you know, they and get hey, more. That's their hustle. That that's great. But it's all about the client. We got to remember that it's all about the client. So this year, it seems like it's it's a big move, and there's so many people who are teaching that lump sum and how to. You know, was, but my problem with that, those people did not do a lot of claims. They'll do like 20, 30 jobs, and they're on a stage teaching it. I see the same with the solar. I see people who've done like sell three solar jobs and they're on a stage teaching and they're creating courses. It's like they don't have numbers to back up. Like what do you what what do you take on solar? Dabbled in it a little bit. I've just got so much else going on and not really feeling it. The last thing I ever want to do is put solar panels on a roof. <laughs> it's too many penetrations. I just any roofer I don't know, any old school roofer, the less holes you got in a roof, the better, right? So tell me what else is going on in Texas, because you have, like, I, I hear a lot of news I, on both sides. I, I see insurance companies keep pushing their laws. I see lawyers bidding insurance companies in courts here. Uh, like Chad Wilson was one of them, so he bid uh, State Farm a few times. I, it feels like a real big battle happening here yeah. on all levels. We are, the industry is divided like never before. Like now I see more and more fights <clears throat> between public adjusters 
uh, contractors, attorneys, um, feel like people charging more and more for their services. It's crazy. Are we all for insurance companies? <clears throat> like after insurance companies money or like what the heck is going on? Like there's gonna be a better way. Why are we fighting so much? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's, you know, and like I said, in Texas, that freeze last year really played a big part of it. And some of the stuff we're seeing them do is, it's just crazy. How you know, they're, they're retracting scopes after proof, you know, proof of losses sent in. And that that's bad news. I mean, that's bad faith written all over it. And a lot of these big claims that we're working on are probably going to go to bad faith after this. It's just, it's nuts. You know, I use, a, I use Jack Hanks on a lot of stuff. And he's done a great job for me. And he brings in an engineer named Todd Stern. And the engineer, once he says that, you know, that those reports that we get from the engineer, you can't overturn that. Once they put that stamp on it, it is what it is. And if it's not damaged, so be it. But if it is, I mean, we're taking one right now from $13,000 to almost $5 million. That's a problem. Wow. It's a big problem. And, then, you know, it's taken months, 10, 12 months to just get it to that point. And we're still not done. That's a huge problem. $13,000 repair to $5 million replacement. Because the roof is completely saturated. I proved it to the adjuster on site with moisture readings. And they just ignored it. So they're they're forcing us to bring in third parties because they're just telling me, yeah, well, prove me wrong. The only way I can do that is to bring in a guy like Todd. Well, you've been a contractor in several states. Compare Texas to Illinois. Oh man. Well, you know, Illinois, you can be the PA and the contractor. Yes, you can. Have you been you, you you were not both, right? No, no, I, but I opened a business up there a couple of years ago and now I've sold that business, but in, uh, my partner had gotten his PA license and it works, you know, to a point, um, we only really did how, one how large is it not conflict of interest in your opinion. Well, I mean, in the one experience that I have, um, there was a, an, a condo association signed on as PA. He was able to get the scope, you know, and enforce policy and code. And then as soon as that was approved, it just went to build, you know, it, the PA fee is waived once they signed the contract for the rebuild and we built the job and it was done. It was perfect. I could see how there could be a lot of conflict there, but for us, that one experience that I had, it went extremely smooth. It was nice to be able to speak on, you know, I know a lot about policy because I've been in the industry so long, but I can't speak on it that gave us the opportunity to do it. So it actually wasn't, for us, it wasn't bad. Can you name a few biggest mistakes you made in business? I don't know how much time you got. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get to the airport, don't you? <laughs> a lot. I've made a lot, a lot of mistakes. Um, learn from them all though, you know. Some of the biggest ones, not coming to Texas sooner. Really? You know, um, went from Illinois to New Jersey after Hurricane Sandy and it put me out of business. That was a tough one. Really? How did it put you out of business? Um, I just, I got sucked back into building. We went out there for roofing and I got sucked back into building and the systems they had in place out there and the labor force and, you know, just finding the right help. I just couldn't get it done and I got overwhelmed. You know, that's why I do have sympathy for a lot of people that are scaling their company. I got in over my head and, you know, and so it, you could sell, but you could not produce. That was a big part of it was the labor. Yeah getting it put back together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when it comes to building, you know, I, I, the last, I was there three and a half years and for the last year and a half, I didn't sign a contract. I was just trying to get just through what build. I had. Wow. It was that, it was that bad, you know, and having to go back and redo work that other guys didn't do well. And it was rough. Yeah, it was really rough. How, so, sounds frustrating. But that's on me, right? So you own it. A uh, few more. We few, have time. A few more mistakes. Um, Can you name? I, I Well, I'll name a big one that everybody wants to know about. Um, and it has to do with the whole, what Lindsay touched on it, you know, and she's coming after me and Steve Badger for, you know, and I don't, neither one of us feel that there was any wrongdoing intentionally anyways. Um, the, the big testimony video that everybody's seen a million times that uh, SVG was putting out there. Um, that was the first commercial claim I ever did. First flat roof I ever did. So you're doing- 1,200 square, you're doing, first timer. You're doing how-to video 
on the first uh, like you're teaching other people how to do stuff on the roof. That's that you... something. <laughs> but me being a contractor, you know, when I got that job, I brought in a vet, a guy that had been in sure. the business forever to help me. I was not afraid to ask for and help. That, and that ad probably have hundred thousand dollars spent on it. Like uh, I think every roofer in the country have seen it. I think it was like up to 2.6 million views. It's insane. Something like that. But you know, it is what it is. I, I, I educated myself getting into that job. I hired the right help and uh, we, you know, we got it done. 2.6 million. Uh, yeah. Somewhere around there. Good job. Um, it ended up being less than that though, because we had to credit back quite a bit of money for work that wasn't done. Um, you know, what happened was, and again, I'm going to own it. I, uh, I hired that contractor, longtime DFW flat roofer and Harvey hit and we took off we went down, I let him manage it. And, uh, he didn't replace the flute filler like I instructed him to, and I didn't catch it. And, uh, some things went down with the claim. And I told the client, if you have any questions or concerns, call your insurance company. Their legal team did. They Google insurance fraud. Dallas and guess who pops up? Steve. Badger. Yeah. And uh, eventually through mediation, he's the one that brought it to my attention that that flute filler hadn't been replaced because I had all the material for the whole roof except for the flute filler. There's only about a third of it purchased. So he's the one that caught it. And the lawyer starts going off and I was just pulled him aside. I said, hold on, pulled him aside. And I, Steve gave me all the stuff. I went in the other room and I looked at it. We came back in. I said, you're right credit the money back. I didn't do it. I'm not taking money for something I didn't do. And I think he realized that that's the first I had found out about it. So we made it right with the insurance company, made it right with the client. And I still work with the client to this day. And that that's probably speaks uh, the highest of the whole situation because you still, I mean, if client think that you're on the wrong, they would never give you another job. You're a crook, usually a crook for life. If they see the intention, if they see, like I said, if, for me personally, that's the highest achievement here. You still have the client. That's, mean, five, that's five years ago. You know, I mean, we've been doing good work for them. I didn't have a production manager to keep an eye on things. I do now. I've, I've hired the right people. I've got that all in place. We've come a, come a long way to make sure that doesn't happen again. You know, tell me more about that ad that job. How did you find that job? How did you find that client in the first place? Well, the, it, <laughs> If you, if you watch other videos, it says that I just cold called it, but I had a relationship, I see. you know, fake it before you make it. That's right. So, so, a little bit of scripting, which is in TV production. You gotta do a little bit, gotta do a little bit, but uh, great ad, great job. I've seen it probably a hundred times. It's impossible not to say, I mean, good job. You're throwing them, you see this guy and you've been associated with SVG for years because of that. Is the ad still up? It better not be better not be so you're out of it um share um the trainings that you took that help you and you recommend to others uh any training that you've done that help you become a better contractor well and i tell you you know early on in the that svgu there was there was not a lot of content but we we put together some good content um and i from what i hear i don't use it but from what i hear that's come a long way and there's other online universities. You've got a, a school. Actually, I, I've never checked it out, so I can't really comment on it. I, I think it's a, a well, week free, comment. a week free now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll check it out. I'll, I'll take the free trial. Okay. Um, you know, there's things like that. And, and what works for one company and their team might not work for others. Absolutely. You know, so I may not feel highly of certain things that I've tried. And I've tried a lot. I've tried it all. I got sucked into the conferences and the let's sign up for this and that and everything you could possibly imagine. And it just, what was I got spun out, man. What, what was the biggest waste of money in your opinion? Looking back, let's, let's help to save someone money now. Hmm. Like something like, you don't have to even mention names if you don't have, uh, if you don't want, but what, what stuff that did not work or definitely was waste of money? Man, that's a good one. Um, I'm definitely not happy with the CRM and the money I've put into that and how it doesn't fit what we're doing. Really? Yeah. Um, Are you going to get a new CRM? Yeah. I've actually invested in a new one that's going to be coming out pretty soon. Hmm. And uh, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be good. Okay. We'll let you test it. 
I don't know about that. I'm, I'm not in CRM <laughs> testing, especially new. There's so many CRM. I talk to probably every CRM in the market. Every year, there's like two, three comes out. It's just you have to use it. And yeah. I, I'm a believer that you can make any CRM work if you really give it. Like m most problems, like I have uh, with people who don't have, um, couldn't figure out CRM, is they never tried. They never actually spend the time, like, or they use very little bit of it. Like contractors don't have CRM use five percent use pretty much for a Google Calendar for like two three features. Mm -hmm. I think you can make work almost any CRM. I mean, they're like you know IQ Links. Well, you, you have guys who's doing hundred million dollars using IQ Links. You have guys doing you know same numbers with the job names. Like they all have companies that made work for them. It just you you have to. Well, the, you know the problem is when you get into the commercial world and you've got a you know a client that owns strip malls all over the place. And every strip mall has a dozen client uh, tenants in it. Sure. And you're going to do all these service tickets and you know weekly here, there, everywhere. Now we're replacing this roof. There's a lot of CRMs that don't structure a tree. I mean, the best CRM properly. is the one you build for yourself. 100%. Right. And that's kind of where we're going with that. And I, I'm not building it by any means. A, sure. a good friend of mine, Matt Fruge, is, and I really like it. It's going to be. I think it's going to be a huge help to the industry. Can so, you imagine doing business without CRM? No. And I just heard. I interviewed a a lady for a sales position the other day and the company she was coming from CEI which now has been dissolved tech to bottom didn't use a CRM and they're a commercial roofing company I mean, paper files I don't even remember what yeah. those are How anymore, do you do that? You know? any other waste of money in business <sighs> sales managers Sales manager. Only because I got the wrong ones. I really need a sales manager to build a team. You know, that's why we're, we're a small company. I got just a few sales guys. I've just been burned a couple times by sales managers and I've just, I've given, I've given them too much too soon and didn't check them out. Didn't, you know, and I background everybody and I just, I got, I got burned pretty bad. So, um, I'd say that's definitely some money I wish I had back. Really? Yeah. I can I can actually share that too. You know, mine actually stole from me, just straight out. Same. Stole. Yeah. This business is so crazy. Sometimes it feels like everyone is against you. There's so much money to be made legitimately in our industry. That's why I don't understand why people screw around. Do you deal a lot with lawyers? I'm sorry. Like, do you hire a lot of lawyers? No. Um, we've got one claim in litigation. It's a historic restoration in Colorado Springs. Um, John Wood of Green Trial Law has that. It's just a, it's one of those, you know, historic can get pretty tricky. It's a terracotta restoration, mm -hmm. spot repair versus full restoration. Uh, that's really the only, I mean, I use lawyers to send demand letters and liens and things like that, but that's the only litigation in, in six years in Texas that I've, I've had, so. Texas or Florida for roofing business? Whew, man. Texas. Texas? Why? For me. For you? Yeah. More opportunities or easier? I, I just, I figured it out. You know, I mean, Florida's a gold mine. If you can go and do all the licensing and all the hoops that you have to jump through and, and if you get a big hurricane, you know, but roofs wear out quick here, you know, and we get hail, I think, I think more than any other state in the country. So, you know, it's good. And the, in the development here, not let's talk outside of the storm roofing industry, just the development and the growth here in Texas, especially in the Dallas area is unbelievable. It's like nothing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Yeah. So now, you know, we've got the custom home company and custom pool company and we're developing and doing commercial properties and all, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not just roofing anymore. So I guess that's probably why I'm leaning this way. I see. Uh, where do you see a conflict uh, with Steve Patrick? W what do you want him to do? What's the resolution for you? I think we're past it. You're past it? What yeah. do you mean by that? I mean, they've already said they're not going to refund the last client. They're going to keep 950 out of the $1,500 retainer. You know, I, I gave him the opportunity. All I wanted to do was call me and, and actually do something about it and just make it right and charge reasonable part ways, never use them again. And that's it. And they just they wouldn't do it. And then who he kept passing me off to, we really had it out on the phone. You know, it was very unprofessional on both sides. I'm not putting it all on them. I, I got a mouth on me, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, any conflict, there's two people. 
Yeah. So you don't think you can settle? You don't think you can? I, I guess if he changes his business structure and helps people more fairly, and I, I see it so down you, the road you, you, somewhere. You think they charge too much? That's what it 100%. is. 100%. He admitted in a comment that, you know, I, I got blocked, of course, level yeah. of playing field. He admitted in a comment he's in the 90th percentile in his market. What does it mean? It means he's one of the highest oh, yeah. priced yeah, people in, in the market. I mean, he admitted it. Um, but if you're the best, it's okay to be the highest. Not as a contractor, I'd say yes. I think you're comparing apples to oranges there. If, if I'm providing, but like, in, let's say the custom homes I build, mm -hmm. I put so much into them, so I'm charging a premium, and my service is premium. If you're charging a homeowner a premium for your services, they should get premium service, right? Well, they're not. They're not getting things approved. They're they're taking money out of their pocket. I mean, it's just they're not fulfilling that. But that six thousand dollars that he charges you on twenty six thousand dollar increase, you know, if they put twenty four hours, I mean, I guess we, like, what I love about United States is that no one can tell you how much to charge, and if he charges two hundred fifty dollars an hour, we don't have to use him. I mean, that's I guess in defense of him, like how I would look. Like you cannot tell lawyer, like, hey, you cannot charge seven hundred dollars an hour. Like you just know what kind of lawyer he is like a track record and if you hire him you hire him mm -hmm. just don't hire a lawyer if you think he's too much so but i but i see your side too like the value have the problem with um public adjusters the uh that i ha personally have is the fa is it worth to the homeowner and to all parties because if if you charge let's say 20 like the the debate i have with anthony a public adjuster you know he charges 25 35 percent good for him <laughs> but where's money coming from? Yeah. Like, you know, how I do you justify that? Exactly. So here, like, I see what you're saying about the rate as long as, I mean, what would. Hey, if, you know, if, if he would have got $40,000 worth of brick approved. I see. $6,000 would have been nothing. But they didn't. So because. And they should have. In my opinion, they should have. That, that should have been a. Did they get overhead and profit on all of their claims? So far on mine, yes. So they do get over mm -hmm. on the you know when Liberty left it out on the roofing, they they were able to get it. And just on one trade, on their yeah, Liberty, I had it on everything else except for the roofing trade, like Liberty Safeco likes to do. Hmm. So that was the easy stuff. It was the brick that we really needed them to get there on, and there's a lot more that goes into that, and and contractors that they referred for quotes that never showed up. And I mean, it, it gets deep. What, what do you think roofing industry really needs today? Like who needs to disappear? Who needs to show up? Like who do we really need? Like who can really help the industry? I mean, who do we need? We still need all these people just in the right situation at the right time. We just need good people. There's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of PAs and I'm not going to say any names. And I hear stories about, you know, Contractors getting public adjuster contracts signed by their salespeople, that's extremely illegal. You know, PA has to represent himself, has to get his own contract. Just mm. stop. Stop doing that. That's what we need. We need people to stop working outside the lines, way outside the lines. You know, the, 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 the phishing phone calls where it's, I've been assigned to investigate your property. Well, it's, there's, you, you haven't, it makes, property owners feel like you're the adjuster coming out, like the insurance company has assigned me. Hmm. And that's a, that comes from the uh, the ultimate pitch, your buddy, Lee. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, I know that. Well, he, he and uh, um, <clears throat> Douglas, they both, you know, were doing that. I had the email from Lindsay to one of my clients, said exactly that, and it was while she was working for him. You know, it's just, just stop, just be honest. My company, Atlas Restoration, has assigned me to come investigate your property. <laughs> be uh, be uh, that don't, one, don't, my company listing your company and not making it seem like you're coming from the insurance company. Don't play games. Don't play so, games. So do you think that- Don't mislead. Do you think that insurance companies are fair when they push back on the contractors? And I feel like we are pushing back on insurance companies crap, but because we have so much our own crap, 
Like we just we throw crap at each other. It's like you did this, you did this, <clears> and, and both parties have so much dirt now, and that's what's scary. Scary is me that you know when you're a good guy and you're fighting bad guy, you know, eventually like truth will always come out. But when you are just like divorced, right? Like you know when the, if husband and is in the wrong, like hundred percent, like it's easy. To, okay, you did this, we're gonna divorce. But when it's you know she does not cook for me and he does not you know spend time with kids it's like well you both have to go and work on it but that's what's happening in the roofing industry now it's insurance companies are blaming all of the parties and then all of the parties blaming it's just there's it, the, well, the bad runner for the good right exactly so the bad contractors that are fluffing everything or the pas that are just fluffing and throwing all this crap and you know charging a hundred dollars for a turtle vent you know like come on you don't need to do that. So, of course, the insurance companies are going to put their guard up. But the insurance companies are hiring people that are completely inadequate and should never step foot on that roof. They're, you know, two or three days in, you can get an adjuster's license in three days on their side. Mm -hmm. And they just throw them out there because they're shorthanded. So you try to educate them and you try to share your scope with them and say, this is what we got to do. But like I said, 13000 to $5 million. I've got other ones that are 500,000 to 5.5 million, 500,000. And they had my scope. So they know what the damages are. And they're, you know, so much shady stuff going on where they send out their contractor for a comparative scope. They get the scope. I review it on a recorded Zoom call with the, the forensic engineers, the contractor for the insurance company, the adjuster for the insurance company and myself on a recorded Zoom call. They approve my entire scope recorded and then when we get the scope none of it's right it's all they they didn't do what they said they were going to do and they fired the contractor that wrote the scope wow so here comes your third party right you need them what do you do then you as a contractor you can't do anything about it no nope. um is there a good insurance companies in texas left sure what insurance company would you recommend? I mean, and residential wise, Chubb, AIG, those guys, they're great. A lot of times they're just taking your scope, review it as long as it's proper. They don't even write one. They just approve it and say, go. Love it. You're a seasoned contractor. I want you to give one last advice to our audience. Someone who's just getting started in storm restoration or roofing business, give them advice. Like you're, you're not at the end of the journey, but you're way, way ahead of so many people. Give them advice um, because I don't want to end on a negative note. I want right. something yeah. positive and good. I would say, you know, I've always been a, an advocate for slow growth is sustainable growth. Don't just go hire 20 people and revolving door. Mm. And, you know, I, I hate that. You know, uh, take on what you can handle. Love it. Um, and the other thing is, is, you know, I've said it a couple times through this is when you screw up, own it and learn from it, you know. Just take responsibility and apologize and make it right and move on. Wow. Awesome. Great tips. Guys, comment below what you think about our conflicts drama. I hate drama. It wears you out. Every time there's a conflict on the internet, it's maybe fun to watch, but I want you to think about those people. And you probably know yourself. When someone is blocking you, bashing you, like it's like we have better things to do. It's um, not the energy that you want to waste because it's, it truly becomes opportunity cost. The more time you spend on conflicts, I remember like the whole Lindsay Douglas thing. I, you know, I wasted days of my life fighting, wrestling for the stuff that nobody yeah. really cares. Like it, it comes in and goes, stay in your lane, but admit your wrongs, own your shit. There's so many people who will not like you, so many people who will not agree with you but you do what's right you watch your lane make sure you're on the right and uh i also want to send a quick message to all the service providers uh do not be offended when the roofer share feedback with you i see so many public adjusters just so sensitive maybe because we roofers contractors were used to negative feedback like i remember getting my first one star review it was hard like i had 60 positive reviews all five stars and I remember first one, I was 30 minutes late, I stuck in traffic, tried to call homeowner, and she met me in the driveway, and she said, 
it's over i don't want to do business with you and she wrote me one star there's nothing i could i could i was stuck in traffic eight o'clock in the morning and i showed up there at 8 30. so it will happen to you but mm -hmm. what's happening is when we when the contractors tell public adjusters or you know influencers you know i'm not gonna roast you if you give me feedback people give me feedback all the time dimitri i didn't like your school i didn't like your product let's i'm gonna make it right i'll give you a refund or whatever so if you're an influencer if you have a group if you have a product if you sell to contractors please be open to criticism you will actually if you read your negative reviews you can find products that you can offer from those reviews like truly like if you listen to your audience like you will build a better product we just need to stop being this sensitive like feedback is good the yeah. same goes for manufacturers manufacturers don't like when contractors talk about their shingles and you know contractors will talk because we're also consumers we provide service but we also consume service and it's your right i love how you said in your video this is your review and you did pretty good job like i think you were balanced i mean it's it's drama it's dramatic but it's real feedback and people need to know that yeah. we cannot just consume infomercial and being sold 24 7 because we're afraid to talk roofers are really afraid to talk about problems with the services and um, we should not be afraid that's yeah. what makes our industry better when we share and we learn thanks man for sharing yeah.